I looked down at my feet and there was a little tail half hidden under the leaves. Yes, I'm pulling the wrong color wire. The yellow should be white. We're pretty happy today. Welcome back to our off-grid home build, where we are looking forward to getting the big solar system up and running. It looks like Charles got this all trimmed up. Gotta caulk wherever bees or something might get in. And I'm not putting trim below the soffit, so I'm just running a bead of caulk below it, and that'll help hold it up too. We are installing the doors on the shed. I've got the right one all on. The hinges worked great. And now I need some help doing the left. Now that the shed is complete, Charles can start the intricate process of wiring up the whole system. But first, we have to pick up our lithium batteries. We're at the FedEx Freight Center picking up our batteries for power on our place. If you're wondering why we had them shipped to a freight center instead of having them arrive on our doorstep, well, we really do live over the river and through the woods. Our road is accessible by a covered bridge that was lovingly reconstructed to its exact original dimensions with a narrow and short entryway and a very strict weight limit. There is one other bridge over the river which can be crossed with a tractor trailer truck, but that route includes a steep hairpin turn that only the most determined locals will dare to navigate with heavy equipment. For example, when our contractor tows his excavator up here, he uses a tricky maneuver that involves backing up for about a mile to avoid going around this corner. Nature nerd alert. It rained last night and I was walking through the forest this morning, trying not to slip on the wet leaves. And I was thinking to myself, maybe this will be the day that I see the first red eft on the property. They are known to walk around in the forest after a rain. And sure enough, I looked down at my feet and there was a little tail half hidden under the leaves. This beautiful animal is the terrestrial life stage of the Eastern Newt and it's brave enough to wander around like this because it is well defended from predators by toxins in its skin. It even has a bright red warning color to advertise that it would be a terrible choice for a meal. I'm getting ready to pull wire. I need to try to pull a string through the conduits. This is for our auxiliary outlet and kind of shore power for the trailer. And I know some of you out there are going to be telling me I'm pulling the wrong color wire. Yes, I'm pulling the wrong color wire. The yellow should be white, but the yellow is what I got. So the yellow is what I'm using. And I had just enough of the yellow, even though it should be white. I need to pull this line back out so I can actually measure it. A proper electrician would have a mule tape that you could pull through with this twine. And the mule tape would have markings already on it. So you would know how many feet. 
This line is going to go to the yurt. We got to pull a wire all the way down to the yurt location. And I've got to get a measurement for this one. I'm ready. If you have been following our adventures for a few weeks, you know that we are collecting rainwater from the awning on our camper. But the bucket used in the prototype did not stand up to the sunlight, so Charles recently replaced it with a rubber bucket for a version 2.0. This fitting, the black fitting, was, I think it was made for like a swimming pool hose. And these are made for electrical conduit, the nuts. Installing the inverter and batteries. It's Hardy Becker. It's what they use for putting tile down on. It's also fireproof. So I'm just, as a precaution, putting it behind the inverter and batteries and underneath them. In case anything melts down, hopefully it won't start a fire. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. As far as I'm concerned, the best battery chemistry for solar. And these are in the form of a uh, server rack battery. I don't have a server rack to put them in, so I'm just stacking them. But these are they're called Trophy. I can't recommend them just yet. I haven't seen them work. Online they seem to be pretty good quality. We're going to play a quick game of Where's Waldo today with the wood frog perfectly camouflaged against the leaves on our forest floor. It's rapidly warming up to 90 degrees again today. So Charles has been looking for jobs to do in the shade. This is a six kilowatt system, and we'll have three kilowatts on each maximum PowerPoint tracker in the inverter. So I'm in the process of wiring up the solar array. We've got 20 total panels, so I've got two strings of 10, 10 panels each wired in series. It's kind of like solar sun-powered batteries each panel is like a battery, so you're putting them positive, negative, positive, and negative, ten in a row, and then wiring it two strings like that into the inverter. And right now I'm just putting on the MC4 connectors, terminating two, the two strings of ten, and it goes down through a weather head into a DC disconnect and then it'll go underground over to the shed. I'm leaving these unhooked for now because I've got the strings all connected together and that makes about 450 volts. So I don't want to connect these things until probably dark, but I also don't want to connect them until I get the other end of the disconnect and the inverter terminated. 
so I have no chance of arcing. We're pretty happy today. We, we sold, sold our, our house. house. on continuing to wire this inverter and main panel and I had to kind of get creative with my conduit. I heated it and bended uh, PVC conduit getting ready to wire up the load panel to the inverter. The sale of our home back in Dallas will more than double our bank accounts which is a big relief. Our building projects are costing more than we originally planned, so it's a good thing the value of the house increased more than we expected as well. I'm standing in front of the pad where we'll install our water tanks and put some fill over them to keep them underground where they won't freeze. This morning we were eating breakfast and Charles got a call from our contractor who is receiving the water tanks at his address. And Charles jumped up from the breakfast table and took off with our borrowed flatbed trailer. And he's going to come home with one of the water tanks. He has to get them in several trips because they are too large for us to transport more than one at a time. This is one of three of our 1,725 gallon water tanks for our cistern for a rainwater catchment. Now we just have to figure out how to get them in. <laughs> we had hoped to wrap up the solar project in this video, but there are quite a few things going on at once around here. While Charles puts the final touches on wiring the shed and prepares for the installation of the water tanks, we are eagerly awaiting two shipments in the mail. One package contains the battery cables for the solar system. As soon as those are in place, we can plug it all in. Then we will have enough power to do pretty much everything we want. For starters, we won't need to use any propane to run the fridge or heat the water in the RV and we could run an air conditioner if we had one. So the other package we are tracking is a rooftop air conditioning unit and the forecast three days from now is in the mid 90s. So tune in next week to see if we can get that up and running in time for the warmest day we've seen yet this summer. <laughs>